The story of the anime begins by showing a tower called the Tower of God, where wishes come true if one manages to reach the top. We see a girl named Rachel running closely followed by Bam, the main character. Bam catches up with Rachel and asks her where she is going. Rachel apologizes and tells him that she has to leave him, as she wants to climb the tower. Suddenly, a light engulfs Rachel and she disappears, and the doors of the tower open. Bam, obsessed with Rachel, manages to enter the tower and meets Head-On, the tower's guardian. Head-On encourages him to take a test to climb up, which involves breaking a ball inside a cage while avoiding being attacked by an eel. Although Head-On warns him of the danger, Bam decides to go ahead. On the way, Bam is stopped by a girl and a boy speaking in an unknown language. The boy, called Evans, gives him a ball that allows him to understand them and realizes that they call him an irregular as he was able to open the door of the tower by himself. It turns out that the girl is the princess of Jahad called Yuri. Despite Evans' warnings, Yuri decides to help Bam and lends him the Black March, a legendary sword. Bam is grateful for his help and prepares to face the difficult test. Despite his best efforts, Bam struggles with the eel and only manages to wound it slightly. He remembers a fragment of his past, where he meets Rachel, his only link to his lost history. Meanwhile, in the present, Bam is still trying to break the black ball. The eel recovers and prepares to attack again. But Bam manages to activate the power of the Black March, impressing Yuri by seeing that the sword only lends him its strength because of its appearance. With the help of the sword's power, Bam manages to pass the test and advances to the next floor. Yuri tries to follow him to retrieve her sword, but is stopped by Evans, who reminds her of the rules about not interfering with the test. Even so, Yuri persists in following Bam. Meanwhile, Hedon observes the situation and kills the eel with a wave of his staff, finding the encounter interesting. After that, Bam is taken to another challenge where he has to fight against many other participants. There are about 400 people in the fight, but only 200 can get through. Bam grabs his sword and tries to escape while being chased by other competitors who try to hurt him. Some of these competitors end up being eliminated by other participants. Bam continues running until he runs into a big guy with multiple eyes. Despite his fear, Bam tries to take him on, but then finds himself surrounded by two other opponents, a boy with white hair and a lizard armed with a spear, who recognizes the power of the sword and wants to fight Bam. After that, Bam finds himself in a battle in which he has to fight several opponents. One of them, a big guy with multiple eyes, aims his spear at Bam. Meanwhile, a boy with white hair approaches and taunts the lizard, asking how much an alligator that can talk is worth. The lizard, called Rack Wraithraiser, gets upset and declares that he is not an alligator, but a lizard. Kun, the white-haired boy, asks what Rack wants from Bam, and Bam replies that he wants to hunt him. Kun comments that Rack is similar to the other participants and tries to walk away. But upon seeing Bam's sword, he becomes interested in it and distracts Rack to escape with Bam. Then, as they hide behind another competitor, Kun introduces himself and shakes Bam's hand. He then asks him where he got the sword. Bam explains that a princess lent it to him so he could meet someone. Kun finds this interesting and asks Bam to join him. Meanwhile, Rack searches for them, while the other participants continue to compete against each other. When all 200 players are present, they are ordered to form groups of three. Bam and Kun decide to join Rack, but Rack rejects them and continues to pursue them as his prey. However, Bam and Kun catch Rack and grab him tightly by the body. Finally, they are transported to the next stage along with the other participants. In the next stage, Lero Ro, one of the supervisors, explains the rules and uses his skill with water to push the participants backwards. Bam surprises everyone by not being repelled by the water, which makes Lero consider him a monster. Lero allows Bam to pass the test, and then they make a bet on who will get through a water barrier first. Bam chooses a girl, but Lero chooses her too, and in the end, declares a tie. Lero answers some of Bam's questions about the tower and the irregulars, revealing that those who enter without being chosen by head-on are considered irregulars. Meanwhile, a frustrated contestant undergoes an immortality test by Lero Ro, demonstrating the workings of an ability called Shinsu, admitting in the end that he was not as strong as he thought he was. Finally, the contestants move on to the next phase, and Lero warns Bam not to get too close to Kun. Then, the third test, the Red Door, begins. Before starting, Kun recalls his past, where he was betrayed and exiled for trusting someone. 
In the present, Khan and the others are waiting to continue the test. A stranger approaches them and gives them a hint about the test, mentioning that time could be important. Khan is suspicious of the stranger and they get into a fight. Later, they are called for the test. As they enter the test room, they see a giant clock and several red doors. The test administrator, Yu Han, explains the rules. They can only open one door and have 10 minutes to get through. Despite the group's attempts to get more clues, Yu Han refuses to reveal any more information and the test begins. During the test, Kun remembers his mother's words about not trusting anyone and thinks of a person named Maria who betrayed him in the past. Meanwhile, Rack becomes desperate and Bam tries to calm him down. Kun tries to concentrate, but Bam's eyes remind him of the person who betrayed him, which distracts him. Before five minutes have passed, Rack instinctively kicks in a door and the group passes the test. Yu Han explains that they only needed to open one door before the five minutes and comments on Kun's distrust and Rack and Bam's trust. Kun leaves without saying anything, and Yu Han warns him about the contents of his briefcase. After the test, it is revealed that the stranger who gave them the clue was a Yu Han infiltrator, who was testing whether the clue helped or hurt the group. Bam tries to talk to Kun about the princess, but Kun prefers not to discuss it. Elsewhere, a group of hooded people are also taking part in the tower tests. After that, Yu Han and Quant, in charge of the first two phases of the test, are discussing about the hooded people who managed to pass both tests. Yu Han informs Quant that he combined the tests to save time, but unfortunately the hooded group ended up eliminating the other test participants. Yu Han asks Quant to cover up what happened or else he will be fired. Quant agrees to help him and Yu Han contacts Lero to address the situation. At the same time, Bam goes to get a drink for Rack, but realizes he has no money to use the vending machine. A guy in a sports suit approaches and buys the drink for him. He introduces himself as Shibisu and introduces his companions, Anok and Hats. Bam thanks them for their help and introduces himself. Shibisu feels some connection with Bam and expresses his desire to go to the final with him. At this point, Lero Ro approaches them and informs them about an extra test that is not compulsory, but in which any group can participate. If they pass, they are considered to have passed all the tests and gain access to the entire tower. Most of the participants are enthusiastic and decide to take part in the extra test, known as the crown game. Lero Ro explains the rules of the game, where they must protect the one who wears the crown and prevent another group from stealing it until all the others are defeated. The representative wearing the crown cannot move until the game is over, and if he or she loses the crown or gets up from the throne, he or she automatically loses. In addition, it mentions that a new group of participants, the Hooded Ones, will enter from another exam. Shibisu's group decides to participate first against another group. In the test, Anok, the girl in green, decides to take on the other group alone and uses her weapon, a sword that transforms into a whip. The use of her weapon attracts the attention of the Black March and one of the Hooded Men. After winning the test, Anok takes the crown and makes sure it cannot be taken away. We then see Bam spot Rachel in the distance amongst the hooded men, but then he thinks he's just confused. Lero announces that Shibisu's group now have the crown, and starts a countdown for another group to decide to participate and take the crown from them. Rack prepares to act, but Kun stops him and asks to wait a little longer. At the end of the count, two groups enter the battle, one strange and one with the sleepy boy. Hats and Shibisu split up to protect Anok. Hats easily takes care of the strange group, while Shibisu fights the sleeping boy's group. Shibisu finds himself in trouble, but Hats saves him. The sleepy boy, named Laura, uses Shinsu in a hidden way and attacks Anok, which infuriates her. Anok, without leaving the throne, fights back with his sword, which transforms into several whips. Sensing the power of Anok's sword, Black March begins to act strangely, releasing her power. Anok also notices the Black March's presence and stops. Laura's group takes advantage of the confusion and leaves the field, being disqualified. Anok abandons his position and confronts Bam about having the Black March, as she is a princess of Jahad and that sword is not for him. Bam refuses to hand it over, claiming that Yuri lent it to him. Anok reveals that the Black March is similar to her Green April, and that it belongs to the three-month series of King Ashel Edward. She again asks Bam for the sword, but he still refuses. Lero intervenes and stops Anok as she is disqualified. Anok proposes a wager to Bam for the swords. Although Bam does not want to accept it first, he finally does, fearing that Anok will seek him out at the end of the test to take the sword by force. Meanwhile, on the way back to her cell, Anok is provoked by a girl from the hooded group, who calls her a traitor. It is revealed that Rachel is in that group. The trial resumes with several groups taking part, including Bam's group. 
Kun takes the crown before the others and keeps it in his briefcase, daring the others to take it from him. After dodging several attacks, Kun reveals that the crown was a fake, taunting the others. The hooded group decides to intervene at this point. Later, in the Battle of Bam's group, it is revealed that the ploy of the fake crown was part of Kun's plan. While the other groups are distracted, Bam takes the throne and is handed the real crown. This reveals one of Kun's abilities, he can copy objects with his briefcase. The other groups decide to ally to eliminate Kun, but Rack intervenes and easily defeats them all. The third round ends and a new round begins, while Bam's group waits for their next opponents. The hooded group waits a short while before leaving, while Kun collects his hair to start the fourth round. Three more groups join the battle. One of the groups tries to ally with the other two, but one of the groups decides to betray them and attack the others, defeating one of the groups and leaving only two. Kun reveals that this group is his ally and explains how he rescued them in a previous trial. Rack praises him for his cunning, and Kun gives him a chocolate bar to prepare. Bam's allies defeat the other group and return to their cell, ending the fourth round. Kun mentions that he didn't want to use them yet, but they must win the bet. Bam apologizes, but Kun insists he will do whatever it takes to help Bam win and explore the tower together. Lero announces the start of the final round, in which the four remaining groups enter. Rack and Kun prepare for battle, but are distracted by the sight of a multi-eyed masked woman defeating other groups. The woman heads straight for Bam, who is defended by one of the members of the hooded group. Bam recognizes the masked woman's voice and asks if she is Rachel, but gets no answer. During the fight, Rack asks Kun if he also bribed the hooded men, but Kun says no, as they came from a different exam and apparently had no interest in the crown. Kun defeats one of the masked woman's allies, while Rack defeats the other. The hooded girl continues to fight the masked woman, but her heel breaks, allowing the masked woman to close in on Bam. Bam abandons the crown and the throne to protect Rachel, who turns out to be one of the masked girls. The masked one attacks Rachel, and Bam, driven by the desire to protect her, unleashes his Shinsu in an uncontrolled manner, severely injuring the masked one. However, Black March stops him and asks him to calm down, giving him a kiss on the cheek and making him faint. Meanwhile, Yuri is still looking for a way to get to the test floor where Bam is. At this point, Evans tells him that he is acting very anxious, but their conversation is interrupted by a large man who assures them that the place their boss told them to go is safe. Yuri orders them to prepare to leave, and the big man asks if the rookie is that important, to which Yuri replies that when he sees him he will realize, as the boy's power is truly impressive. Bam is lying on a stretcher, being looked after by Kun. Elsewhere, Lero is talking to Yu Han, explaining what happened during the test and asking him why he asked him to organize the crown game. Yu Han mentions that it was Quant's mistake and that his intention was to facilitate the progress of the hooded group before Evankel realized what happened to the other groups with them. Lero also mentions that the hooded group should have gone for the crown, but they completely ignored it. He suspects that one of the girls in the hooded group seems to know one of his examinees, which is against the rules set by Head On who stated that those who know each other cannot face each other in the tests. Yu Han, in his defense, reminds Lero of the purpose of the tests, which is to eliminate dangerous ideas or powers from the tower, and asks if he has encountered such a person. Lero replies that he has not. Yu Han then asks if anyone can control Shinsu without making a pact, to which Lero replies that it is against the rules of the tower, but that there was an irregular capable of doing so named Yurek Mazino. Lero understands and leaves Yu Han's hall. Afterwards, Lero finds himself walking down a hallway and wondering if Yu Han avoided his question, as it seems Bam doesn't control the Shinsu. He claims that Bam is the Shinsu himself and poses a danger to the tower. Meanwhile, Bam is still sleeping and Kun is by his side, talking to him and telling him that he must wake up, as they have another test the next day and will be disqualified if they don't attend. At that moment, Rachel interrupts Kun and asks him for a favor. While Bam is still unconscious, Rachel tells Kun how he chased her when she told him she was going up the tower. After leaving him, she never imagined he would look for her. That's why she asks Kun to lie to Bam. He wants Bam to wake up and doubt whether he really saw Rachel or not. This is all to avoid problems between them, as when they are together, they become a burden to each other. Kun thinks she is just being selfish, as Bam really wants to be by her side. On the other hand, Anok takes the Black March with him and gives it to Shibisu to talk to her, as the Black March does not talk to women. Shibisu tries, but the sword does not accept it either, considering it ugly. Anok withdraws to another place, taking the sword with him. 
At that moment, the other girl from the group of hooded men appears, called in Doris. She warns Anok that the sword belongs to Yuri, the only chosen princess in the last 500 years who was granted the three-month series. She warns Anok to consider returning the sword and calls her an imposter once again. Meanwhile, Kun is in the room with Rack, thinking that he must not allow Bam to continue his relationship with Rachel. At that moment, Bam wakes up, realizing that he has been sleeping for five days. Afterwards, all the participants gather in a large room to make their selection of positions before moving on to the fourth test. Lero explains to them that the fights in the tower are conducted in teams and that these teams must have different positions. There are five types of positions, the fishermen, specialized in close-range combat and located in the center of the battle. The spearman, who controls the enemy by attacking from afar. The lighthouse keeper, in charge of illuminating the tower with the beacon, gathering combat information and giving orders to the team. The scout, who analyzes the enemy in the front line and supports the fisherman. And finally the wave manipulator, who controls the shinsu to provide support or control the combat. In a few days, they will have to learn about their positions and then several candidates will be selected for each of them. Kun asks if injured participants are disqualified, to which Lero replies in the affirmative. Referring to Bam, he mentions that he fulfills the position of wave manipulator, but as the teacher in charge of teaching that position was delayed, he still has a chance to recover. After the meeting, Kun tells Bam the news that he can still return to the trials. He also tells him about Rachel, leading him to believe that the girl he saved was someone else. To cheer him up, he tells him that he will still be able to see her when they climb the tower and gives him new clothes, as the ones he was wearing were stained with blood in the previous battle. Bam changes his clothes and learns that the person who saved him was indeed Rachel. He wonders why she now wants to be away from him. Bam heads towards Rachel's room, which has another name, but before he knocks on the door, he regrets it and decides to leave. After that, Bam is in class with other participants who are also considered for the position of wave manipulator. Master Yuga explains to them that Shinsu is like divine water and is the material that controls everything. For this reason, in order to use more than a specific amount of Shinsu, it is necessary to make a pact for each floor. Of those present, the only one who has fulfilled a pact is Laura, who made it while she was asleep. Yuga asks the others to set their artifacts to visible mode and then gives her the order to make a pact with a guardian. Bam does so and when he tries to make the pact, a giant snake appears and agrees to be the guardian because of its incredible smell. Bam is exhausted as he watches the others act normally. They then return to rest and on the way, Bam apologizes to the girl in the mask for damaging his eye. Later, he meets Ho and Laura, who offer to help him if he needs anything. Later, Bam returns to Kun who tells him that Carr belongs to the position of spear thrower and is currently in his class. In that class, they must throw a spear at a distant object. He also meets the boy who accompanied Rachel, showing himself to be a good spearman. Later, Shibisu arrives with hats to ask Bam for a favor and is taken to the cafeteria, where more members of other groups meet. Indorsi approaches them to eat together and wonders how they can get along so well if they are enemies. Shibisu explains that he was selected for the position of scout and, as a test, he must make nine friends, so he needs everyone's help. However, Indorsi doesn't believe in that friendship stuff. Then, Anok arrives, who is supposedly no longer part of Shibisu's group, and mentions that Indorsi is a princess of Jahad who has fallen very low by simply eating with the others. Bam notices the presence of the Black March and Anok makes it clear that he will not give it back to her. Bam asks if both Anok and Indorsi are Yuri's sisters, and Indorsi confirms that they are but not biologically. That is, they are chosen from the best families and races to basically be the mark that Jahad presumes. Then Endorsi is in a class for those who were selected for the position of fisherman. In this class, they have to accumulate points by taking down their opponent, bearing in mind that they can lose their lives, as what happens there is up to each participant. Endorsi starts to think about eliminating the others to gain more points, but is attacked by Anok. Endorsi repels her attack and calls her weak for being nobody without her green April, reminding her that she is an imposter. Anok reminds Endorsi that they are all imposters, as there is no real princess of Jahat. In the Lighthouse Keeper class, Kun is responsible for gathering information. In that class, we also see Rachel performing the same task. Kun discovers that Carr managed to qualify for the next test and tries to look for information about Rachel or Bam. But the information he finds is very scarce, which he finds strange. He then searches for information about Anok and discovers that she was chosen as princess after becoming supreme and receiving the Green April. This catches Kun's attention, as Anok is supposed to be testing to climb the tower at this time. 
but the information indicates that Anok should be dead. Meanwhile, the battle between Anok and Endorsey continues. Both have thrown several participants into the void during their chase. At one point, Anok manages to catch up with Endorsey, but Endorsey stops her and slams her to the ground. Endorsey reveals that she is the daughter of the real Anok, the real princess of Jahat. She mentions that she realized this at the test of the crowns, which is why she called Anok an imposter. However, he stopped pursuing her because he became interested in someone else. Anok's past is then shown, where we see her happy with her mother, who had married a famous cook. One day, the cook was killed by the other princesses of Jahat, who also ended up killing Anok's mother after she tried to take revenge. For this reason, Anok seeks revenge by eliminating all the princesses of Jahad, and begins by trying to eliminate Endorsi. The king of Jahad is the first man to climb the tower and found the kingdom. Because of this, the women who receive Jahad's favor become princesses. These princesses are not daughters of Jahad, but come from all over the tower. The price for the power bestowed upon them is that they are not allowed to have relations with men or have children, to prevent the spread of their power. However, one did not obey and that was Anok's mother. In the battle between Anok and Endorsi, Endorsi manages to dodge all of Anok's attacks and claims that Anok's mother made a grave mistake in trying to spread the power granted to them. Anok becomes enraged and manages to get close enough to Endorsi to break her guard and push her into the void. Before she falls, however, Endorsi grabs Anok and they both fall together, ending the ordeal. At the bottom of the platform, both survive and begin to argue. Endorsi tells Anok that her mother, whom she considered a sister, treated her very well after she became a princess. Endorsi wants to know if Anok ever regretted what she did, but Anok tells her no, remembering the moment when she said goodbye to her mother before she was eliminated. Elsewhere, Bam is performing a kind of spell together with other participants. Who, who thought he was superior to Bam, realizes that he is unable to master his Shinsu, while Bam keeps improving and surpassing him thanks to Laura's help. Laura taught him how to better control his Shinsu in exchange for a favor, getting him another pillow and washing the one he already had. Kun arrives to take Bam away, and Hu leaves, feeling envious of Bam. Kun tells Bam about the fight between Anok and Endorsi, in which they were both seriously injured which was probably due to their complicated relationship. Then, Shibisu comes in sad because he needs to make more friends to pass his test. Bam asks Kun to help them, and Kun has an idea. Meanwhile, Endorsi is in hospital with a broken leg, mentioning that she ran out of stitches due to medical expenses, so she has been unable to eat. She receives a visit from Bam and Hats, who curiously bring her food, but don't deliver it until she agrees to be friends with Shibisu. Endorsi is reluctant to accept it first, but finally relents when Hats asks her nicely. He then tries to do the same with Anok, but she refuses. However, they convince her with a chicken pie. Afterwards, the four reunited celebrate that their plan worked to perfection. Later, everyone is together in the cafeteria, eating lunch and hanging out, except for Rachel, who is still hiding from Bam and eating apples on her own. Endorsi notices and follows her into the bathroom, where he talks to her. Rachel asks her if she has made any new friends, to which Endorsi replies that she is only with them because they pay for her food. Rachel also asks if he has mentioned anything about her, and Endorsi tells her he has not. Before leaving, Endorsi puts in a good word for Bam, saying that he's a good guy and that he doesn't understand why Rachel wants to stay away from him, considering he's willing to give his life for her. Endorsi just hopes that what Rachel wants at the top of the tower is something better than Bam. Later, during Shinsu's class, who continues to envy Bam, as he finds it strange how he has suddenly improved so much, leading him to suspect that he is hiding something. After training, who feels exhausted and remembers the people of his village being attacked by his horns. At that moment, someone knocks on his door and finds a letter on the floor. The letter tells him what he must do to ascend to the top of the tower. Later, Lero finds himself in a meeting with Yu Han, demanding explanations as to why he will not take charge of the next trials, as they plan to replace him with a less competent administrator, referring to Quant. Elsewhere, Lero gathers all the participants to explain the next test, called the Joint Test. This consists of a chase in which Rack and Rachel's partner will not participate because they were the only ones to pass a previous test. The participants will be divided into two teams and receive individual marks for points. Kun realizes that he is on the A team, while Bam is on the B team. There will be two chasers, one will be Quant and the other will be a fisherman from the team. The chasers will wear a red badge to be identified and the test will take place in a circular building that looks more like a ship. To win, you must either make your team's chaser reach the finish line or steal the badge from Quant. 
The winning team will get 10,000 points and if they manage to take Quant's badge, they will get 20,000 points. However, they will lose if Quant manages to take the badge from their team's pursuer. The participants are taken to the circular building, where the A team is located. Kun is there acting as the leader. He tells them his plan to lure the pursuer using a Shibisu as bait. As they wait, he is surprised at how calm Kun is, even though, if they win the test, Bam will no longer be able to climb the tower. After a while, they manage to lure Quant, who is forbidden to use his Shinsu to level the powers. Quant goes after Shibisu, but realizes it's all a trap and just plays along. He knocks out one of his lighthouse keepers and then chases after Shibisu again. However, he falls into the trap set for him, as Kun was also in the position of the lighthouse keeper and Anok was acting as the fisherwoman in charge of stealing Quant's badge. Despite Anok's attempts with her green April, she fails to take the badge from Quant, who dodges it, making her angry. This is the reason why Lyra wanted to take charge in that test, because when Quant gets angry, he loses control. However, to Lyra's surprise, Quant holds back and decides to wait for the participants' next plan. They all start to run away, and so he tells them that he will give them a two-minute head start to chase them. Lero doubts if such a basic plan is the only thing Kun has in mind, but Yu Han tells him that he will surely do something else and that he will have to wait. While that's going on in Team B, Bam is trying to find Rachel, who calls herself Michelle to throw him off the scent. And Dorsey tells him that she's already gone and Bam asks why he chose her, to which she replies that she was his only choice. Rupa keeps running to get to a bridge and try to win the race, but Kun knows that Quant is not going to make it easy for them. Here we see him still counting before he sets off after them. Once he's finished, he takes off after them. Kun notices and tells everyone to get into position. Anok is in an elevator, so she needs 10 minutes to get to the bridge. While she goes up the lift, Quant will have to use the stairs, making him an easy target for an ambush, so they must stall him for at least 5 minutes, while the watchmen continue to wait. If plan B doesn't work, they must guide the pursuer to the exit. Quant reaches the staircase and realizes that he has been ambushed, realizing that the pursuer from that team is on her way up. But before he follows her, he will teach them a lesson. Hiding in the shadows and using incredible speed, he takes out the participants on the stairs one by one. It doesn't even take a minute and Quant is still making his way through the participants. Anok manages to get out of the lift while being escorted, and Quant soon catches up with her, as the entire group on the stairs is defeated. Shibisu proposes to Kun to wake up Laura to help them, as he is asleep at the exit. But Kun is hesitant to do so, as he is practically already approved. Lero watches them from a monitor and thinks he's already lost, as it's only a matter of time before Quant catches up with Anok, as he knows which exit he's heading for. Carr tells him not to underestimate Kun. Lero then thinks that maybe he could have copied the badge with his briefcase, but Yu Han tells him that's impossible, because he modified the badges with his Shinsu so that they can't be copied or compressed. Shibisu and two other participants should manage to stop Quant, but he also defeats them easily, and they inform Kun that he has lost sight of him. Quan arrives at the bridge Anok is walking on, but on the way he runs into Kun, who is waiting for him. Quan asks about Anok, as he doesn't see her, and Kun tells him that she jumped to use the exit below, but Quan doesn't believe him because she couldn't withstand a fall from so high. Kun tells him that she is a princess of Jahad and with the ordeal she had earlier she strengthened her body, and now she must be running blind. She tells him all this to try to throw him off the scent, because Anok is actually hiding in a blue cube that Kun is handling, so she tries to trick him into jumping over the bridge and going after her. Quant knows that he is hiding her, so he decides to jump onto the bridge, but together with Kun, because if Kun dies, the cube Anok is in will disappear, and she will also fall into the void. Kun while falling lets go of Quant, to be saved by Anok's sword, causing only Quant to fall to the ground. Anok climbs back onto the bridge to reach the end and win the test. Bam, who sees them together with Group B, is thrilled that they are going to win, but the whole group stares at him strangely, because if they win, Group B cannot pass. Anok is about to reach the final, but to her surprise, Quant is waiting for her there, and without giving her time to do anything, he snatches the badge, giving the a team as the losers. Group B celebrates for having passed. Meanwhile, in a room, Kun apologizes to the a team for not being a good leader, although this is all a charade to avoid earning their hatred. He purposely betrayed the a team to save Bam, as with Laura's help, they came to find Quan to help him get back on the bridge. Lyra wonders why Kun betrayed his own team. But Yu Han explains that he knew what he was doing, as Laura, Anok, Shibisu and Kun himself had already qualified. Therefore, he needed his other friends who were in Group B to move on with them to the next round. 
On the other hand, in Group B, the members are fighting over who will be the leader, and Dorsey offers himself as leader and is accepted. Group B then tries to carry the badge to the bridge. In Dorsey, along with Bam and two other participants, take the lift. Hats and a couple of spearmen take the stairs, while Serena and Hu wait at the entrance. Serena tells Hu that she has lost her motivation to continue climbing the tower. This is because she knows that in the next trial she will probably have to kill the people she has lived with in the last few days. She says that before she came to the tower, she used to steal goods with her friends. At one point, a Supreme attacked them and killed her friends, but she was saved by head-on who brought her to the tower to participate. Serena says that at first she had no trouble killing someone, but now she is hesitant to do so. Who replies that their relationship hasn't changed, making it clear that he doesn't care about what she just said. Meanwhile, Hats becomes alert as he knows Quant is close by. As in Dorsey and the others make it out of the lift and onto the bridge, in Dorsey betrays her companions by beating two of them. She explains her past, mentioning that she comes from a family that adopted girls to fight each other, hoping to find someone worthy of being a princess of Jahad. And Dorsey recounts how she used to watch the other girls eat at the table while she ate on the floor. However, one day she managed to sit at the table and eat the food she had always dreamed of, as she had eliminated all her adoptive sisters that day, making her a candidate to be a princess. After telling this story, she reveals that her goal is to eliminate the B-team contestants, as only four can pass, and currently there are six of them. He then warns Bam that he too will have to do similar things if he wants to keep moving up with Rachel. Meanwhile, Hats instructs the two spearmen to hide in order to ambush Quant. Later, Quan appears visibly upset at the humiliation he suffered by accepting Kun's help. On the other hand, who abandons Serena to pursue her own plans, rejoining in Dorsey in their fight against the two contestants they intend to defeat. Bam intervenes and asks in Dorsey to stop, reminding her that she too was once weak. While she is distracted, one of the contestants attacks her with his sword, but Bam steps in to take the blow. He then heads off to find Rachel, who is in her lighthouse. Meanwhile, Huao interrupts Rachel and takes her with the excuse of wanting to talk about Bam. Rachel goes downstairs and is taken hostage by Hu, who threatens to hurt her, knowing that if he hurts her, Bam will also suffer the consequences, something Hu discovered through a letter from an unknown author. The test broadcast is stopped as Lero decides to interrupt the event but Yu Han insists that the test must continue. Meanwhile, Hats tries to buy time by fighting Quant, but fails to prove a strong match for him. In a final desperate attempt, Hats clings to Quant to allow the spearmen to attack him, but discovers he has been betrayed when the spearmen flee and talk about how they abandoned him. Quant learns of the betrayal and changes his objective, pursuing the spearmen and warning them that they are worthless and that their death will be painful, who realizes that Bam will come to Rachel's rescue. However, Quant shows up and ruins his plan. Then Bam also arrives, and Hu forces him to confront Quant, but the latter uses his Shinsu to immobilize Bam, preferring to go after the badge bearer. He tasks Bam with saving Rachel. In desperation, Hu stabs Rachel in the back. Bam mimics the technique Quant used, pinning Hu and knocking him to the ground as he grabs Rachel. Quant is surprised to see that Bam has imitated the skill of a supreme. Rachel dies during these events. Hu, lying on the ground, admits that he is envious of Bam and tells him about his past, how he couldn't protect anyone in his village because he was weak. He then tells Bam that he was never interested in climbing the tower. He only did what he did because he hated him. After these words, he takes the knife he stabbed Rachel with and takes his own life. Serena arrives at the scene and finds who already dead. Quan approaches them and tells them that the ordeal must still continue. And Dorsey also joins in, taking the badge from Quant and winning the battle. She tricks Quan into thinking she stole the badge from him, when in fact it was she who took it from him. From the room Yu Han calls the test over while Rachel's partner suddenly disappears. The next day, Cart tries to explain how Rachel's partner suddenly disappeared. They ask in Dorsey about him, but she mentions that she didn't know him well, as he was always quiet and that she found him already accompanying Rachel. Kun retreats to his room, thinking that only two wave controllers can pass, which is the position Bam is in. He knows that Laura has already qualified, so he did his best to get Bam enough points to pass, including convincing Laura to help him in his plan and also exchanging the original letter he had given Hu. Elsewhere, Princess Yuri is arguing with Evans about the delay they are having in getting to Bam on time. There is also another person with them. Kun is resting in his room, when Rack interrupts him by knocking on the door. Kun sees a miniature Rack mocking his stature, blaming Yu Han for his shrinking. Rack explains that he bumped into him in the hallway and called him a midget without realizing who he was. He then asks Kun to make him big with his magic briefcase, but Kun tells him he cannot. Rack annoyed decides to go to Bam, 
but Kun reveals to him that Bam has no intention of continuing to climb the tower, as his motivation was Rachel, who is now in a coma-like state. Rack is determined to take Bam away, but Kun asks him not to. At that moment, Bam appears and reveals that Rachel can no longer walk due to the injury to her back. Despite this, Bam is determined to climb the tower to be Rachel's legs. Kun remembers his past relationship with Maria and decides to join Bam's goal. Bam asks for one more favor to organize a funeral for Hu, which Serena, Quant and Lero attend. After the funeral, they all drink a toast in his honor. Bam talks to Rachel, who apologizes for abandoning him. But Bam forgives her and thanks her for being his light in dark times. Rachel apologizes and cries. Later, Serena leaves the tower without saying goodbye to anyone, leaving her dagger for Shibisu. Elsewhere, Master Yuga is in a secret conversation with someone, claiming that he will soon recover Black March and Green April. Before he finishes his report, he is interrupted by Yu Han, who discovers him. It turns out to be Ren, the 67th agent of Jahad's royal guard. Yu Han reveals that he had discovered him some time ago, but ignored him. Ren, feeling cornered, tries to attack Yu Han by summoning a giant snake, but Yu Han counters with another snake that stops Ren's attack. Ren admits that he has been bored for a long time because no one stands up to him, but Yu Han makes it clear that he has no intention of fighting him and facing a Jahad Supreme. Yu Han knows that Ren is after Black March and Green April and seeks to eliminate Anok. She agrees to help him complete his mission because the rules of the tower require checking if someone is harmful to it. She asks Ren to inform his boss and then go have tea with him. On the other hand, Kun is talking to Lero, telling him about the letter that was given to Hu before the formation of the teams. He realizes that the person who delivered it knew the position of the participants, specifically where Rachel would be. Later, Lero seeks out Yu Han to announce the approved teams. They gather in a room and name those who passed. The fishermen include Endorsi, Anok and three others. Of the spearmen, Rack and two others pass, including Ghost, Rachel's friend who disappeared. Scouts who passed include Shibisu, Hats and Neri. Wave controllers, as expected, include Laura and Bam. Kun and Rachel also pass, but due to Rachel's injuries, she is eliminated. A participant who does not pass complains about the results and Yu Han gives him a test to check his strength. Kun also expresses his dissatisfaction and is called to the front. Yu Han asks him why he is dissatisfied despite having passed. Kun explains that he wants to see Rachel participate in the final test. Yu Han points out that, due to her condition, she cannot participate according to the rules. Kun asks him to allow them to do a guardian test. Yu Han mentions that only irregulars can apply for such a test. At that moment, Bam stands up and reveals that he is an irregular, surprising everyone as no one knew it until that moment. Yu Han asks him to accompany him, while the rest wait and discuss Bam's situation. Lero warns them that they are about to face a crucial decision, as, if they collaborate with Bam and pass the test, they will be considered accomplices to an irregular forever. Despite this, the majority decide to continue helping Bam and wait for his return. Bam finds himself in front of the guardian with whom he had made a deal, asking him to allow Rachel to continue participating in the trial. On his way out, he informs Yu Han that the Guardian has given him permission for Rachel to continue and that he leaves everything in his hands. Without any further problems, the final test begins. This test will consist of deep sea fishing. Rack, now back to his normal size, asks if it will be a challenge similar to hunting. But Yu Han tells him that they will actually be the prey. Bam and Rachel will be the fish that the gobbled dolphins will catch. These dolphins, which resemble seals, go out fishing once a day for the gobbled queen. They use their Shinsu to create a net and catch the fish. Bam and Rachel will be in a Shinsu sphere to be caught and subsequently eaten by the Gobbid Queen, who will then eject them to the surface. Meanwhile, the task of the rest is to stop some goblins trying to steal the fish caught by the dolphins, who are accompanied by worms. If they allow Bam and Rachel to be eaten by the worm, the test will fail. There is also a kind of striped pig in the area that scares the dolphins, so they will also have to keep them away. Basically, the rest of the participants will have to make sure that the dolphins can fish in peace. In addition, there is a monster called Toro that they must avoid encountering, a beast so ferocious that it even makes the Supreme Ones run away. Without further explanation, the test begins. Bam and Rachel are inside Shinsu's bubble while the seals enter the water. The group led by Hats will keep an eye on the goblins. Rack and the group of spearmen will wait from above to intervene. Shibisu and his group will keep an eye on the pigs, while Kun oversees from the surface. On the other hand, Yuri and his group are getting closer and closer to Bam. Returning to Bam, he talks to Rachel about Yuri, the princess who lent him her sword. Hats informs Kun that a group of participants has disappeared, 
and sure enough, Shibisu finds himself in front of the bull, who is devouring one of the participants. At that moment, a seal passes by and the monster follows it to attack it. Shibisu tries to get its attention with the dagger Serena gave him, but the bull doesn't stop. She then tries to hurt it, but fails to cause any damage. Anok arrives to help Shibisu and begins to fight the monster. Endorsi also appears and joins the fight, which leads to an argument between Anok and Endorsi over who got there first. They decide to make a bet, if Anok wins, Endorsi will be his slave for life. But if Endorsi wins, Anok will give him the green April. At this point, Rack gets bored and wants to fight too. But Hats warns him about the arrival of more goblins than expected. Hun asks Hats and Rack to find out where the goblins are heading, while telling them to wait for his signal for a surprise attack. The dolphins are forming a red one, visible to Bam and Rachel. Although Kun cannot see clearly at depth, Nair, who is on the surface with Laura, manages to find his way thanks to his ability to raise fish with Shinsu. Indorsi is fighting the monster, but she is still unable to defeat it and her time is almost up. The monster briefly traps her, but she breaks free and the monster flees after a loud scream. Anok tells Endorsi that her time is up and she goes after the monster to continue fighting. Meanwhile, Ren sits, commenting that they have fallen into his trap. Kun asks Nair if she can control other creatures with her ability, such as dolphins or the Toro monster, and she replies that she can't, but suggests that perhaps a Supreme could. This makes Kun start to doubt something or someone. Returning to Endorsi, she loses sight of Anok and again encounters the monster who is now much faster and stronger, and knocks her unconscious. Elsewhere, Anok continues to search for the monster, but encounters Ren, whom he tries to ignore. However, when he mentions her mother, Anok stops. Ren introduces himself to her and shows her his mother's necklace. Anok asks him what he is doing with it, and Ren simply laughs, insinuating that he was responsible for his mother's death. Meanwhile, the goblins continue to advance. Rack asks if they can attack now, but Kun stops him, having come up with another plan thanks to Nair's abilities. Anok tries to snatch the necklace from Ren, but he defends himself effectively and quickly wounds her in the abdomen. He then takes the green April and keeps it, intending to kill Anok. But first, he brings in Dorsey to give her a chance to redeem herself by killing Anok, as that test was specifically designed to kill her due to her birth, which is against the rules of the tower. Ren gives the green April to Endorsey to kill the imposter. On the other hand, Hats is discovered by the goblins and one of the spearmen instinctively helps him, which results in them being discovered and having to flee, thus ruining the plan. Endorsi approaches Anok, but not to finish her off, but to return her green April and receive the Black March, as they both agreed to finish Ren off together. While that is happening, Shibisu continues to search for the princesses, and while shouting he meets Yuri. On the other hand, Rak escapes from the goblins and decides to confront them. Returning to the battle of the princesses, they manage to subdue Ren, but seeing Endorsi let her guard down, he attacks her and sends her flying, then hits Anok and steps on her wound. At that moment, Yuri arrives on the scene thanks to Shibisu. Ren is surprised to see her and formally introduces himself, mentioning that he is on a mission to retrieve the swords. Yuri sees his sword lying on the ground and decides that he will take care of the situation. Meanwhile, Rack finds himself surrounded by multiple goblins and, although he can fight them off, his companion fears for his life. As the goblins multiply, Laura intervenes using her powers to float them all away. Returning to Yuri, she is threatened by Ren who accuses her of betraying the king by protecting the imposters. Yuri warns him to stay away or she will kill him, but Ren only gets excited and attacks her. However, he fails to do her any harm, and Yuri sends him flying with a single finger. The goblins and the striped pigs are in the middle of a fight, as the pigs were lured there by Rene and Laura with the help of Kun. Knowing that the pigs were chasing the seals, Kun led them to where the goblins were. They all thank Kun and he tells them that he leaves the rest in their hands. Right behind him appears someone very similar to him. That person was accompanying Yuri on the rest of his journey. Meanwhile, Yu Han is watching the test from a monitor along with Lero and Quant. They notice that someone has infiltrated the place. When he tries to identify the person, the monitor signal cuts out. Quant suggests intervening, but Yu Han stops him. Lero points out that Yu Han is very calm given the situation, which raises suspicions. Later, it is revealed that the mysterious boy was responsible for cutting the transmission, and Kun suggests Kun take him to Princess Mary. Evans and Kuretan rush off to find Yuri. Even though she is not in trouble, they want to be by her side as soon as possible. 
On their way, Yu Han stops them and invites them to tea, asking them several questions. Evans gets straight to the point and tells him that they are only there to retrieve the Black March. Yu Han understands this and makes it clear that he will not interfere, maintaining a neutral stance. Meanwhile, Yuri is easily fighting Ren and as she is about to kill him, Evans communicates with her through an orb, telling her that it doesn't matter if she kills the infiltrator, but that she can't help Anok. Yuri walks away from Ren, not making a decision for the moment, and orders Kiraden to eliminate Ren, falling from above and smashing him with his hammer. On the other hand, Kun turns down the offer to see Maria. At that moment, Hatch shows up to try to help, but the mysterious boy is glad to see that he has friends and leaves without another word. Hatz had a feeling that something bad was going on, as Kun is not the type to rest while his friends are in danger. We then see Ren completely crushed, while Yuri manages to recover Black March. In her last words, Ren tells him that what she was really looking for was Bam, but it's too late, as she sent the monster after him at that point. At that, Bam, who was talking to Rachel, mentions that it's not like before, as he now has friends and can control the Shinsu a bit. He tells Rachel that together they will be able to climb the tower, but at that moment the monster arrives and starts attacking Bam. Yuri mentions to the others that she is going to interfere in the test to help, but Yu Han warns her not to, as Bam will be disqualified if she does. She doesn't care about that, but Anok tells her that she can't do it, as they will all climb the tower together. He decides to trust that Bam will be able to defeat the monster and pass the test. However, Bam did not fare well, as he could not get rid of the monster and was injured several times, even being eaten by the monster. But Bam frees himself by exploding the monster from the inside with his Shinsu, which this time instead of looking like water, emits a radiant light. When the monster is finished, he falls into Rachel's arms. Yuri trusts the words of Bam's friends, so he takes the green April to take with him and leaves a metal feather for Shibisu to give to Bam asking him to tell him that it is waiting for him on the 77th floor. She then asks Evans to accompany her to leave, and on the way out she meets the masked girl, who turns out to be a guide and he doesn't know why she is in that place. Elsewhere, Bam and Rachel are about to be swallowed by the Gobbid Queen. Bam assures Rachel that they can now climb to the top of the tower together and gaze at the stars. Rachel looks at Bam and extends her hand towards him, but to everyone's surprise, she rises from her seat and pushes the protagonist, causing him to fall into the void. Bam is stunned as he watches Rachel drift away, slowly plunging into the depths. Meanwhile, Rachel is calm, believing she is finally free of Bam, remembering how the tower never chose her the day she decided to leave Bam. Head-on was expecting someone else, but Rachel pleaded for a chance to move up. Despite her initial refusal, Head-on shows her the awakening of the savior, revealing that Bam was the true chosen one. He makes her see that her desire to become a star is only to seek admiration. Despite her weakness, Rachel begs Head-On to allow her to rise, willing to do whatever it takes. Head-On offers her a test to kill Bam. Although Rachel accepts, she admits her weakness and asks for a weapon. Head-On offers her a guardian to fight in her place and the chance to revive once. Rachel manages to get close to Bam in the crown trials, but is attacked by Warion, the masked one. Bam saves her, which arouses her envy. Rachel was the one who incited Hu to kill her, but was revived by Ghost. Since then, her actions were manipulated to be alone with Bam in order to kill him. In short, Rachel felt hatred and envy towards Bam. After these events, Rachel is the only one to return to the surface and is greeted by the others. When asked about Bam, she states that he did not survive the monster's attack. Afterwards, Lero summons the participants to inform them that they have investigated Bam's location but have not found his body, suggesting that it is possible that he may have been eaten by fish. The test is over and everyone has passed. Lyra withdraws, leaving Rack and the others unable to hide their sadness. Meanwhile, in the corridor, Lyra walks with an eye to Yu Han's office to confront him about what has happened. Meanwhile, Bam's friends mention that they still owe him a favor and that is to help Rachel get to the top of the tower. Everyone agrees, except Kun who has his doubts about Rachel, but pretends to agree with the others. Meanwhile, Lero is fired and seeks out Quan to tell him that he will also be fired. He asks him to accompany him to investigate the matter further. Yu Han takes the rest of the participants to another location to continue their trials. Meanwhile, Bam, who is still alive, is found by Warion. Bam wants to know why Rachel tried to kill him. Warion suggests that he climb the tower again, as only there, at the top, will he find the answer to everything. He offers his help to train him. Several years pass, and we see Bam as an adult, marking the end of the first season of Tower of God.